Hello and welcome to another filter grade tutorial. My name is Layton and in this quick video I'll be showing you how to use layer masks in Adobe Photoshop. Masking is a non-destructive way to eliminate certain aspects or section of a layer to be able to easily undo or fix your actions. Layer masks work great if you want to remove backgrounds or add an adjustment or effect to a select area of the layer. So here I am in Photoshop. I've got a nice photo of the Hollywood Hills and Hollywood sign. And what I want to do is actually replace the sky in this photo with this sky of a night scene. So we can do this fairly easily with layer masks. There's a couple ways you can go about doing this. The easiest and quickest way to eliminate your background or sky is when you go over here to the toolbar on the left hand side and click the magic wand tool. You can actually just click on the sky, hold shift and just keep adding points until your entire background is highlighted. So as you can see there's a little dotted line here going across the sky. So once this is highlighted all you have to do is go down to the bottom of the screen and click this layer mask button here which is the circle inside the rectangle click that and automatically has gotten rid of the foreground and left the sky which is the opposite of what we want but in order to switch that around all you have to do is double click on this mask that you've created and that's going to bring up your options and right at the bottom this button invert that's just going to invert the layer mask so right away you see you've replaced the background now how layer masks work is whatever is white is going to be showing and whatever is black is going to be eliminated. So as you can see here on this mask, the sky is black, meaning that we've gotten rid of it completely and the foreground is white. If you're still kind of struggling with this concept, think about putting a white sheet of paper up to a light source, like a light bulb. You're still going to be able to see light coming through that sheet of paper. However, if you hold a solid black piece of paper up to the light, that solid paper is going to block any light coming through. So it's the same concept with layer masks. You can actually paint a layer mask by clicking the brush tool and making sure the color selected is black. You can actually remove the layer just by painting on it. If we undo that and change the color to white, it's gonna bring back your original photo. So as you can see, if I paint this, we're back here. Now if you don't wanna have as harsh of a brush, you can actually select a shade of gray. So I'm gonna select that one right there. This is useful if you wanna have a nice fade or gradient transition from the foreground to the background. Now, it doesn't look as good. I would recommend sticking with white or black and then changing your actual brush settings, maybe bring the opacity down as well as a flow. So you can just fix the edge here because you still see a little bit of the blue from the sky before. And you can just kind of go along brushing over the edge just to make it less obvious that you've cut this out. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the edge just to make sure it looks a little bit more natural. Now you spend as long as you want doing edge maintenance on this mask. You might even go to the blur tool here and just do a quick run through of this edge just to kind of blur it into the background a bit more make it look more natural i'm going to leave that and move on to a bigger issue which is the fact that this foreground is looking very bright and well lit and does not really blend well with this background so i'm actually going to create a curves layer and i'm going to right click so that I can turn it into a clipping mask so what that does it just only affects this layer here and it will not affect the bottom background layer which is the sky it's only going to adjust the foreground so using the curves adjustment i'm going to adjust the exposure so it looks much more real because the hollywood hills are not this bright at nighttime mess around with the highlights all right so that looks good it's got a bit of a red kind of hue to this foreground and you can really see this on the white of the hollywood sign so I'm going to use this layer mask, which is already here. I'm going to paint black. I'm going to change my opacity all the way up, flow all the way up, and I might add a bit of a feather to the edge of my brush. Okay. So now I'm just going to paint black over the Hollywood letters. And as you can see, if I paint on this foreground, it's going to return back to its original state before I made the curves adjustment. So I'm going to undo that. Basically just exaggerate the letters a little bit more and correct that red hue that the curves layer made. So again, just a subtle adjustment, but that's really going to make a difference. We zoom out, might adjust that even more. So there you go, I've used two different masks here. Using the magic wand tool, I got rid of the sky and created a mask. Then I created a curves adjustment layer to make the scene more realistic and darken the overall look. Then created another mask to accentuate and exaggerate the Hollywood sign, making it more bright so it sticks out a lot. So there you go, that's a quick and easy way of how to create masks in Photoshop. I would highly recommend using masks over actually erasing. If you use the eraser tool, then continue making adjustments. You won't be able to hit undo if you go too deep in adjustments. There's no way of really getting it back. However, if you use the layer mask and just paint on the scene in a pinch, you can always just switch the foreground and background color, paint with white, and you can bring back your foreground. Now, if you like to speed up your workflow in Photoshop and create effects that would take you a long time or things you just don't know how to do, check out filtergrade.com for all the best Photoshop actions, such as light leaks, some lens flares, color wash, film effects, and many more. In addition to the Photoshop actions, check out Filtergrade for all the best Lightroom presets, Capture One styles, and video LUTs.